Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis and in this video we are going to be going over that massive drop to the downside that we have seen here on the Bitcoin chart. I want to be covering my short trade that I am still in right now and where I am looking to take this over the week to come. Ladies and gentlemen, this video is going to be absolutely brilliant. You're going to enjoy it. All you need to do is one thing. I'm not going to ask for anything else, nothing else. All I want you to do is pay attention. You need to pay attention to these videos because the levels that I'm giving you, the heads up that we're giving here are, they're invaluable. So just pay attention to the video, mark out the levels that I give you, and you're going to be, <laughs> you'll end with smiles on your faces. So that's a good deal, isn't it? Let's go straight into the analysis. This is what we love, and that is... Bitcoin trading. Let's go. So, uh, as always, the style of these videos, this is focused on the education. I'm here to educate you and empower you to be a better, more profitable trader. So let's go over this section of the price action that led to the breakdown. I want to cover the educational reasons behind this, and then we'll move on to what's happening right now and the short trades that I remain within. Okay. So let's begin. So it obviously also, you know, we're going back a few days here when we were trading within that monthly to daily range. If we open this up a little bit and zoom in, we were obviously trading between this monthly and daily range. We had a nice range bound environment for a few days. What were a few heads up that we had obviously of potential weakness on this chart? The first and foremost, I think this was probably the most important, was that at the end of the day, it was still another lower high on that medium term time frame. So if we were unable to break that monthly, which is obviously what happened, we were unable to change that lower high market structure. As we can see here, lower high, this is another lower high. And that monthly wick that we obviously done to swing failure pattern the last high was still on the medium term time frame a lower high. Obviously, when you zoom out, it becomes even more apparent if we come up to like the four hour time frame. Overall, of course, from that $69,000 high, it is all continuously there on the overall medium term time frame, a series of lower highs. And what is typical of a, you know, of a bear market or just of a downtrend. It is a series of lower highs and lower lows. And this is continuously lower lows, lower highs with your lower lows to your lower highs, lower lows to your lower highs. Of course, this is now another lower low. So that is the first and foremost thing that we could have been aware of. We are in a downtrend for sure, okay? That doesn't obviously mean <laughs> anything other than we're in a downtrend. So what one then was some a few more heads up that I can teach you here. Okay, the first and foremost thing is obviously we were trading within the monthly to daily range. And so what's really, really, really important? What do I tell you every video? What do you need to do? You need to be planned. You need to have a plan for if the monthly had broken to the upside, what we would have done. And also if the daily had broken to the downside, which is what happened, what would we done? E.g. we have to be prepared with a bullish scenario and a bearish scenario. We have to have both plans and then we will trade the outcome of which way it goes. Okay. That is the first and foremost thing we need to have him, you know, planned out before we take every single trade. We cannot be gambling. We cannot be trading just to trade. We have to have a thought out plan with a good, you know, technical understanding behind that plan. Okay, and for me, it was this. This was posted in my group on the 2nd of December at 10 a.m. Really simply, I was thinking the breakout of this range is going to be absolutely pivotal. And I'm talking about the monthly Okay, at 58K to that daily at $56,000, the range that we were trading within, I felt it was going to be extremely, extremely key. Okay, we broke above the monthly. We obviously, I was personally looking for a push towards 60K. If we lose the daily, that for me would be a big sign of weakness. And I will play caution on all longs until a sign of strength or much lower on the Bitcoin chart. So I had this idea in my head, okay, based off of moving on from the Elliott wave counts based off of the open interest and volume that we were seeing increase within that range. And then having that plan thought out in my mind straight away that if we lose this daily, I am personally then going to be waiting for much lower or that sign of strength. Okay, that is the plan. That's the thought process. And then when it obviously came, it's waiting, it's waiting, it's remaining patient. And obviously we saw then uh, the swing failure pattern of the yearly point of control. Okay, from the yearly point of control, obviously, it was kind of nice because on the 3rd of December, I, I, I thought out of this plan. Yeah, so we were obviously within that range, the daily to the monthly, we were within that range, but we had this scenario that could have led to great weakness. And that is basically a push up above that yearly point of control before, you know, dropping down in price. And this was a 
thought process that I had that could obviously occur. And when it happens, well, there's no hesitation from myself thinking to, right, here we go. There's the swing failure pattern of the point of control. We have pushed above those highs. We have moved that back down below the lows. It's an idea that I had. Let's trade it. Make the plan. Trade the plan. No hesitation, as you see here. Without hesitation, I took profit on my long because I was obviously personally was long from the daily. I was also long from a swing failure pattern down here. And what I've done is I've taken profits on the long and added massively to my Bitcoin short trades. As you know, I have shorts from $69,000, the all-time high. I was also short from the monthly. As soon as I saw the swing failure pattern on here, I took profit on the short and I added greatly, greatly to that short position that I had from the monthly. Okay, giving me a very, very, very big short. Uh, why? Because I was recognizing the heads up here of the weakness that will be coming. Because taking that almost, you know, almost two days here within this mini range, another lower high to be put in, swing failure pattern of the point of control. It all led up very nicely to we are going to move down at least below this daily, at the very, very, very least. Okay, and I knew breaking below this daily was the, the, the sign of weakness that I was waiting for to basically understand, you know, that potential of going much lower on the Bitcoin chart. OK, and then obviously what happens, we do push down below the daily. And I think the first thing you might be thinking to yourself if you have learned from myself is, OK, is there a long off of the CC? Is there a long off the, uh, you know, the SR flip resistance into the support? And this is I mean, this is the this is why people join the group for these sort of heads up. After the swing failure pattern of that yearly point of control for obviously the another short trades that I've taken. We have now broken that 56k daily. I am not going to long for a while and see the sign of strength, which for me, by the way, would have been a reclaim of the daily, or until we go much lower. Okay, and obviously we had the example there where we go much lower. Okay, made the plan, now I trade it. Okay, so I really hope you can start to understand my thought processes here, and you really are learning from this. It it's so important, yeah? So I recognized the range that we were in from the levels that I've had marked out weeks in advance. I then move on a step further in this plan for preparing for a bullish and a bearish scenario. Okay, I knew that losing this daily would be great weakness and I would not want to long until we get really much lower was the best case scenario. Then not only that, but I'm taking trades within the range. Within that range, I'm also planning for my next trade within it. And then when it comes to fruition and I get that set up, no hesitation on closing the longs. I'm not being, you know, I'm, I'm trading what is happening on the chart. We have a brilliant intraday set up within this. Add massively to the short positions, recognizing the context here of weakness with a partial rise. OK, we get that partial rise. We break the daily. I am not interested in longing the CC. I'm not interested in longing any SR flips. Any setup that was around here, I was just not interested in. Why? Because I even wanted to see the sign of strength or much lower on the Bitcoin chart. And what happened? We got absolutely much lower. And that's what I'm, this is what I've, I mean. It's, it's, it's just sensible, clever trading, however want you to refer to it as. But it's all about that heads up. It's all about having the heads up having that plan given to you and like, you know, it's, it's just ultra, ultra, ultra important. And that would not have happened. That would not have happened if I hadn't have made the original plan of understanding, break this daily. I do think we go much lower. Okay. And so I hope that section, this first, you know, eight minutes here has really helped you understand, first of all, why we broke down. It was the series of lower highs. It was then the point of control swing failure pattern. Okay. And then it was just, well, really simply, there was zero sign of strength bears take over on the chart short is actually the much better trade and you know price breaks down extremely very 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 quickly and this is another thing we had been prepared for why did price break down so quickly there was actually no high term time frame level between this weekly and this daily so there was eg there was actually very 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 little support all the way down to forty two thousand dollars so that's why you went from 56 to $42,000 within the day, because there was really simply hardly any support when you look here. There was actually hardly any support all the way down to your last area of consolidation. Yeah. So that was really, really, really key. That's why we went down so very quickly. OK, and that brings us up to where we are here. OK, that brings us up to where we are here. As I said, I'll talk you through the short. Obviously, I then still hold short from $69,000, okay? And that was obviously, again, from a plan that I had of one year in advance of $69,000 of being a, you know, significant high. Still hold that short, of course, not taking any profits on this, just holding this down. 
And the second short then that I have now is this lovely short originally from the monthly compounded heavily on the swing failure pattern. OK, so I'm in those two big short positions at the moment. And personally, yes, I am looking to take this down lower, of course. OK, uh, so where where are the next where's the next level that I'm thinking to myself where we could get a potential bounce here? OK, where I could look for an intraday an intraday trade. Okay. Well, the first thing that we have here is obviously our, our daily NPOC uh, that's coming in at around uh, uh, 46,800. And then we also have this last area of consolidation lows, which is around, you know, let's just say $46,000. So we have an intraday and I, and I want to like, emphasize intraday. <laughs> um, you know, it's not exactly a strong level because we don't have those confluences. Yeah, I would always say this. If we want a really good trade, we need to see a lot of confluence. And just because of the speed of the drop, you know, the 20% buyback, we don't have that confluence. So, it's, you know, it's caution to the wind sort of thing. But we do have that kind of loose intraday support around that $46,000 to the NPOC, 46800 I would play a little bit cautiously there, but we have to try and form a range somewhere, and that would be a sensible place to form the range, okay? And that would be then having an intraday range within the um, low of the wick to the high that we put in, obviously, on the bounce. That high of the bounce, obviously, front running 50,000 psychological. In the end, you know, sometimes this happens on the first bounce back. A lot of people are going to be putting in their cell walls at 50K, and the first touch of it, okay, um, you know, it's it's difficult, let's say, to get through that level on the first attempt. If we start to find support on the intraday here and we do manage to move back up, the likelihood of breaking it the second time is increased. OK, so each time you test a level, the weaker it gets and the higher the probability of breaking it. OK, so that's why first attempt. Yeah, it's no surprise that we didn't get through it. But if we can test a second, a third, you know, the more times we're testing this, the weaker it gets, The you know, so we, we would then expect that to break. So I think we got the intraday support, um, as just mentioned, and then the intraday resistance is obviously that 50k psychological. But I personally would expect that to be broken on a. If we can test this two or three times, the, the probabilities are greatly increased that we can break break it to the upside. Does that mean break to the upside and hit a new all time high? No, but we can at least trade it to our next intraday level of resistance, which is coming in obviously around those order blocks. You know, anywhere between fifty two and fifty three thousand uh, dollars. It's definitely a zone. It's like a zone, just as these. It's the zone of support, in my opinion. It is a zone of resistance. It's quite hard to pinpoint the exact dollar on these levels because, the, firstly, the volatility is quite greatly increased, and secondly. We don't have that confluence yet. And I'm always searching for high probability trades. And that's where I can see three, four, five different technical tools all coming together in the same place. Those are the trades I absolutely love. And I just don't have it here. So that's why I'm giving like these areas of support, areas of resistance. And I personally would only trade off of a reaction. Easy if that level offers nothing and we just go straight through or straight, th you know, straight through either way. It's just no trade taken by myself. I need to see the level actually forming a significant reaction. Sometimes I will be aggressive and help cause those reactions. In times like today, I don't need to be aggressive. I'm in very comfortable positions. Uh, thankfully, I suppose myself and other people that manage to listen, <laughs> you see here, CC Paul send there he goes, people getting into those short positions from those POCs. You know, we're just in a really lovely position. And how do we get into this lovely position of sitting in shorts that are greatly in profits? It's by having that plan. And now I can wait for this plan to play out. I'll either wait for the intraday support to be shown if nothing's happened, but we, we're going to search for lower. And if we can get this range, which I kind of would like, I'm not going to lie, I would like to see the range put in here. And then if we can test this 50K, you know, two or three more times, then I'll be looking for the breakout of this intra range up to my next level of consolidation. OK, um, yeah, so that, that, that's basically what I wanted to talk you through in this video. So I feel it was a really, 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 really important one. OK, uh, teaching you about the market overall market structure, how that co comes in, in, in with great importance, how we then have an intraday range and we're able to, you know, while most people are sleeping, most people are bored, nobody was interested in this range. We're still looking for the trades within it. And then when they're coming, we're, we're taking them. Yeah, we're, we're not hesitating on this. Bam, taking the trade. And then from there, really simply, it's, you know, wait for lower. <laughs> and we got lower. Uh, so yeah, that's what I wanted to talk you through in today's video. I honestly just hope that you have truly enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something from it. Uh, if you have uh, enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more from myself uh, and the whole team that we have, obviously, it's not just myself. We have a whole team of traders uh, here to assist you. Then obviously you can see more of this at chartchampions.com. Okay, for these little heads up that I'm giving throughout the day, 
for my overall plan. Obviously, last night I'd done a Champions live stream where it's like this, but like times 100 more in depth, marking out all the levels, doing the whole analysis in front of you, e.g. I delete everything, mark out all the levels, come to a plan by the end of it of what I'm looking to do over the next week. It's, you know, just much, much, much more in depth than you actually see me do the analysis. Uh, that's for the Champions. And obviously for the educational type content, so you understand all these type of charts, so it's for the under the contenders module. So there's plenty more if you want more. Um, you know, I'm just happy to bring you this video today and say, I truly hope I was able to help, you know, I think I did, <laughs> giving you those heads up over for free on YouTube. So uh, yeah, all I want to say is thank you ever so much. If, if you lost some money on the drop, do not worry about it. What's done is done. The only thing you can do now is make sure it doesn't happen again. So educate yourself hopefully, and uh, enjoy it. Thank you ever so much, everybody. And uh, that's me signing out. Cheers and goodbye. Oh, no, actually, before I end, of course, non-financial advice disclaimer. Just a trader. Hope you've enjoyed. Thank you. And there we go. For the fifth time, goodbye. Cheers. <laughs>